Hi, I'm Sandy Pierantosi, and today I'm going to demonstrate a bowl with a wrapped rim that's made with a circular template. And the way the circular templates work is that anything that is made on a radius or that you want to be in a conical form, uh, you start with a circle. So, for instance, I have a circle here and I have the, a, a middle pointed out. So you can make any part of the circle and you can take any section of it to make the pattern. So this particular pattern would be cut, and you always have to cut from the center, would be cut right off of the center point so that when I pull this around, I am on the correct radius. So I'll just take my pattern. I use a lot of templates in my work and I put notes on the templates as to what could be made with this particular template. So I'm going to roll this slab out a little bit more just to thin it down a little bit. And I'll lay my template on the slab and lightly trace around the edge because I always want to texture the clay before I cut it out so that I can keep the shape of the template intact. So I trace it and I'm going to use this nice little roller and I'm going to roll this around. And what this also does is it allows for um, the usage of some of the scrap, play, scrap clay on the edges. So I'm going to cut this. And my knife is just going straight in. And then to bring this around to join, I want to bevel the edges so that when they wrap around, they'll meet and have enough overlap so that I can push the clay out and give it volume. And so I'm slanting the knife to bevel that. I'm coming over here and I'm going just under the surface of that knife, kind of splitting that thickness in half on this side, also holding my knife at a slant, and then I will score and slip. And then pull this up onto a board. Like that. So now I have my edges overlapped with a good, uh, at least a half inch overlap that gives me a lot of room to move the clay. And I'm gently going to tack it. And on the inside, I get a wooden tool. And I just make sure that that seam is really sealed. And then I'll smooth this clay into the wall. And that will get even more smooth as I start pushing the pot out. And then I'll smooth this edge. And then I'll flip this over and deal with the seam on this side. And I'm really just kind of tacking that out outer edge and really smoothing that inner edge. And then because this is a little bit of a slant because it's on a, on a bias, I'm just going to turn that bottom up so that it's flat that I can add a bottom to. So now I have my, the bottom of my bowl I'm putting into uh, a correct circle and I have it lifted up a little bit so that it's flat and I have these biscuit cutters. These are a really great tool in the studio and I just want to measure which biscuit cutter will fit that opening and that one fits perfectly. And so I'll take this and cut out the base. Now since the clay is soft I use a little cornstarch so that this does not stick into the clay. Cornstarch is also good when you're using any non-porous material when you're using texture. And I'll just cut this out. And generally you're going to have a little bit of pull on the side of that where you pull this off and I just gently roll that to just flatten that out and then I use cloth I can use this and I cover it and I just smooth the edges 
with my fingers so that I don't have a sharp edge there and it elim eliminates cleanup at the end. Now I'm going to score the bottom and I just use a cut up serrated rib for my scoring tool. I think it's the best scoring tool. I'll score that and dampen it. And then score my base and slip. I use water or very, very thin slip, like skim milk, because the clay is so soft that you almost don't even need to um, use slip, but I do just as a precaution. And I'll just flip this over to the bottom, fit it on there, and then I get another board and lay it on there. Push, just to really give it a good seal, kind of shimmy it on there. So you can make this a bowl. All you would have to do is clean up this rim. You can make it a straight-sided bowl if you like things that have a, a, a straight line. Or you can push it out, which is what I mostly do. So I'll just use my fingers. And I'm using these fingers to push out. And I'm supporting the pot from top and bottom with my other hand. And I'm just pulling my hand up. And depending on where you're putting the most pressure, that will determine where the widest part of the pot is. So I'm making it wider up here so that it tapers, but you could just as easily start pushing out from down here to have a lower uh, center of gravity on the, pole, on the bowl. After I do that a few rounds, I'll check it. Make sure that it's uh, nice and pushed out the same all around, and then I'll soften this edge here because this cut edge gets very sharp and soften this edge. So to join the wall to the base I'll use a, a wooden tool like this and I'll just take a little bit of the clay from the wall and push it down into the seam. There's already slip in the seam which I let set up for a little bit and that's how I would join the base to the wall. And just compression with a wooden tool is really a great way to avoid hairline cracks, a great way to join things. That compression is really important. After I'll do that, I'll just get my finger and run it around that way and that way to smooth it out. And then you can finish it even more, but that's the basic connection point. So now I'm just rolling a coil as a measuring tool because I need to find out how much of a slab I need for the rim, because I'm going to wrap this rim. So this is really just, again, it's to measure the rim. I'll just break it off. So I know I need at least that much clay. And then I have a slab ready here. And I want to roll this much thinner. And whenever I'm rolling a slab out, I'm always flipping it. I'm never just rolling it on one side. It just keeps the compression even. And this can get to be a good, like ha at least half the thickness of, depending on what you're going to texture it with. I'm going to texture it with something so I can show you. So it's about, it's about that thick. So a beefy eighth of an, eighth of an inch. Because then I'm going to texture it usually using this tool. This is just like a vacuum cleaner hose. Oop. This is the length I need. And this is a good width for something like this. This is about three quarters of an inch wide. And I'm just going to have my tool here for measuring. Just move this down. And then I like to smooth every part of a pot. I don't want any sharp edges. And it also, it not only smooths it, but it frames it in a really nice way. And because clay wants to be aligned in a certain way, if I took this and tried to wrap it around this rim, 
I would probably crack it. So the way to have the clay do what you want is to get it aligned in the direction that you want to go. And I want this to go around. So I hold this slab on either end and I just drop that edge. And I'm pulling this around as I drop it. And what that does is it starts asking the clay particles basically to come around because I want them to go on the rim of that bowl. So you're kind of coaxing the clay. You're just kind of dropping it. And that's pretty much enough. And while that's happening, you're stretching it too. So you can probably cut some of this off and it'll still fit. And then I'm going to turn this around and I'll give it a light score. You don't need to score it real heavy because it's getting wrapped and dampen. And then I'll come up here to the bowl. I'll score the rim and a little bit on the side, outside and inside. And I clean up any burrs and dampen this. Then I'll lift this and I'll center this over the rim and just lay it on top and start crimping it around. So because I've taken the time to get the clay particles uh, going in that circular direction, I don't have any cracking when I try to pull this around. When I get to this point, I go just past where the other end is and I'll just pull this away and I'll bevel this. I like to use an X-Acto knife for that. And I'll slice this again just a little bit past that one. What I'm trying to allow for is the shrinkage so that it doesn't split there. So by pulling it back, by making it longer and then pulling it back and pushing it in, that helps that seam not split when it gets fired. So where that is attached, there's always a little bit of a disruption of the pattern. So I just take a tool and come in and just pull it around to match up with the others. And you can do it with a lot of different patterns, not just this one. This is just one that I use. And then when it gets a little stiffer, you can go in with a sponge and clean it up and it then becomes part of the hole. You don't notice it as much. And then I'll go and I'll wrap it, crimp it all around. It's a very enjoyable method. I use this rim on a lot of pots. And there's something nice about working with a soft slab because if you handle it correctly and take into consideration all of the factors of the material, you can get it to do a lot, but you have to respect it, respect what it can do. And sometimes it leads you to do what it wants to do. So that's the bowl with the wrapped rim.